I figured it out, it was because I had my window open for a vent. Um, I don't like driving with my window closed. Um, it's just, I'm weird. Um, and other than that, I think I had the radio on really, like, really, really low, and it was causing some interference on the sound. Um, but anyway, so today's vlog was on religion. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background on me and what my religious views and beliefs are. And uh, um, please excuse the clanking you hear in the background. That is my um, that is my decoration that hangs from my rear view mirror. It, it has a set of dog tags on it and they click against everything. So um, please excuse that. I noticed that you could hear that fairly clearly in the last video. Um, so anyway, um, I am not Christian. Um, I was baptized as a Mormon when I was uh, 10 or 11, um, but I have not stuck with that. I did find that a lot of the Christian belief system just didn't, I didn't identify with it at all. Um, so I actually, for a long time, well, I'm gonna say for actually probably about two or three years, didn't actually have a religion. And uh, I was, I was of course, you know, like 12, 13, 14, um, hadn't settled on anything, had gone to church with every single one of my friends, I've been to every kind of Christian, Catholic, um, I've even been to a couple of Jewish churches, I've been to Baptist churches, I've been to Mormon churches, I've been to all of them, and none of it seemed to work for me. Um, so, when I was 13, um, my dad was, uh, well, first off, let me say, my dad was in the Army. Um, he was career Army. He was literally in the Army for like 30 years. And during that time, he made several trips around the world, courtesy of the Army and his deployments. Every time he went somewhere, he'd bring back a book from that country. Typically, the book was something on legends, fables, fairy tales, and or religion from that from that chosen country, whatever country it was that he was stationed in at the time. And so, my dad, being a big book person, of course, held on to all these books. Um, so there was a whole bookshelf at the back of, at the back of our hallway, and my dad he pointed at that bookshelf and he said, "I want you to go through that bookshelf, and I want you to find something to believe in." I was at a really really bad time in my life. I was really depressed. I was realizing that the whole Jesus saves and God saves and all of that wasn't aligning with my thought process. It just wasn't logical for me. It didn't fit my my thought process. It didn't fit my life. I had a very, very hard childhood. Um, I went through a lot of things that children should not go through. And I was just, I was at a point where just nothing worked for me. I didn't, it didn't it didn't strike me as anything that I could comprehend or believe in or follow. And my dad's one thought was everybody needed something to have faith in. And so he told me to go through that bookshelf and to read the Bibles that he had, read the, you know, the, the fables, the, Mary the fairy tales, the 
the myths and the legends and and everything and to find something to believe in so I did I took his advice to heart and I read I want to say probably about 70% of those books before I branched out and started reading on the internet checking out on the internet but so I have read four different versions of the Bible I have read parts of the Quran I have read um, I have read parts of the uh, yes, even the Satanic Church's Bible, I've read parts of that. I didn't really understand that. That was a little beyond my grasp at the time. Um, and of course, everybody's, you know, stigmatized, you know, Satanists worship the devil. And they don't. They worship themselves. They themselves are gods. It has nothing to do with the Christian devil. Unless, well, there is one branch that does, but it, it's not really relevant to the Satanism thing. Um... But, so, I went through and I read, you know, the North, Norse myths, the Celtic myths, the, the Greek, the Romans, um, there was even, like, a ancient Mesopotamians and all that stuff. I've, so I've read it and I've, I've gone through it all and then I, I kind of got to the point where I wanted to know modern stuff. I wanted to know, like, what was what was out there besides Christianity and, and Catholicism. I wanted to know what the modern religions were. So I went online and I started looking it up. You know, I was looking at other religions, you know. Alternative religions was, I think, the term I used. And I stumbled upon... Uh, I think that, I think back then it was uh, Gardarians Wiccanism, um, and I and it just it resonated with me because it was about it was about the spiritual sense. It was about using your own energy and being you know powerful in yourself, and it didn't require other gods or um, anything. It was it was just it was about empowering yourself spiritually, physically, mentally, and that resonated with me. It always did. So I became Wiccan. And of course now, I, now that's not an accurate term. It doesn't describe me. That's not what I am. Um, but so I, I went and I, and I studied that and I branched out into tarot cards and I branched out into pendulums and runes and all kinds of stuff and got into the crystals and the incense and, and, and everything. I got it. I, I sunk myself into it as much as I could. And for the longest time, I, when I, when I finally did get my my necklace because you know how everybody wears a cross necklace or something like that for the longest time I kept my necklace under my shirt so nobody ever saw it nobody ever knew because I knew that as a Wiccan it would the symbol itself was viewed as devil worship and there was a lot of stigmatism against it and it was not something that was displayed in everyday society it was still at the time um it was still a very hush-hush thing, and everybody was still trying to hide being into, into witchcraft and Wiccanism and everything like that. It was all very hush-hush when I was a teenager. And um, I remember one day I was cleaning the living room, and my dad was watching TV, and he was smoking a cigarette, and I had grabbed everything off of the table to clear the clear the coffee table off and I leaned over to grab his ashtray to take his ashtray into the kitchen and my necklace fell out of my shirt and I was standing of course right in front of him and so it fell out and kind of just dangled right there and I didn't even think anything of it I didn't notice I at the time I wore like five necklaces and so I didn't even think anything of it and it just fell out and 
my dad reached out lightning quick and grabbed my pinnacle and just stared at it for a minute and then just busted up in this uproarious laughter like it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen and so of course you know a little miffed a little hurt that he's laughing at my necklace I you know I stand up roughly and jerk the thing out of his hand and and I go about dumping my stuff and I'm just like in the back of my head I'm thinking well that's really mean you know just laugh at me because you know I chose something I did what you told me to you know and he finally gets control of himself and he goes you know it figures you'd be the one and I went what do you mean and he goes just hang on a second he gets up and he goes in his room and I can hear him rummaging around in his closet he's tossing boxes you know and my dad by no means at the time was a young man he was very old he was he was uh at the time I believe he was 60 and so it was it was kind of you know kind of comical to you know see him in his room throwing boxes around trying to find the whatever item he was looking for because I didn't know what it was at the time and he comes back out to the living room and of course by that time I'm done and so I sat down and I had my book and I was starting to you know I was reading my book I don't even remember what book it was, it was. but he walks up and he drops this thick ass leather bound book in my lap and he goes you took after your grandmother and just walks away and I was so confused and I picked it up and it turned out that it was my grandmother's book of shadows lo and behold her whole life and I had never known about it apparently my sister did but I had never known about it my grandmother was a pagan the whole time and now my grandmother died and I believe it was 1990 it was either 90 91 or 92 so by then it had been several years since she passed away and I didn't I remember going to her house and I remember her having all kinds of odd little things like all these little crystals and stuff and I just thought that they were pretty I didn't think anything else of it it, it wasn't you know I was like five at the time because I, I think that it was the summer that my brother was born so I think I was maybe like five four or five something like that I think it was the summer I turned five and so um, I I didn't think anything of it at the time and then of course she passed away a couple of years later and I never really got to that age where it's appropriate to really talk about religion with my with with your children you know and so I didn't get to have that conversation with her I didn't get to have that convers I didn't really get to have that, that conversation with it. my parents or anybody like that it was just uh, I did I followed the crowd in school and by that time because I had given up hope on everything and my dad had told me to choose something and that was what I had chosen it was really cool to find out that I had come back to the family's roots and chosen something that the rest of my family apparently had followed in um, so going back and finding out reading through her her book and finding out uh, that it goes back so many generations in my family was was kind of like the most awesome thing in the world so flash forward a couple of years um, about 18 or 19 I started getting to the point where it was too it was too standardized okay and see the beautiful thing about the path of witchcraft is you can be whatever you want to be you can follow any path you want to follow you can you can follow um, you can follow Odin but turn around and follow Athena from you know Odin being Viking or Norse and Athena being Greek you know and then turn around and follow Ra 
being an Egyptian god and it's not going to affect your craft. It is not doubted upon. It is all, everything in the craft is about intent and changing things in your life for the better. Using only your personal energy. We may work with the gods, but we do not rely on the gods. The gods do not provide for us unless they see fit to do so. They do not involve themselves in our lives unless they see fit to do so. They may call on us to do whatever task for them. That's a different story. That's, you know, if I ever get into um, doing my, my pagan vlogs, I may actually talk about that. But it, it literally is, magic is self-reliant. It is about your personal energy and the energy that you can pull from the things around you. It is about intent. It is not about who has the most expensive athame, which is the ritual knife. It is not about who has the most herbs or who has the most expensive crystal or most expensive talismans or anything like that. You can draw your freaking spell on a piece of toast and then eat the damn thing after and it will still work for you. That is why I chose paganism. That is why I went to paganism. Okay? But see, being as a Wiccan I was before, I decided that Wiccanism was too ritualized. Every time I did a spell, I had to call the quarters. I had to, I had to pray to the directions. I had to call the quarters. I had to call the goddess and the god. I had to close the circle, open the circle. I, it was too formal. It was too ritualized. I did not, I, I did not like it. So I started branching out again and looking for other paths because it just didn't seem like the path that I wanted to be in. And knowing that the craft has so many paths, I mean, there's Buddhist, there's, God, there's so many, I can't even name them all off. I can't even think of them all right now. But, so, I just went and I looked it up and I was like, okay, so paganism is an umbrella term for anyone who does not believe or follow the Abrahamic religions, which is Christianity, Catholicism, and Jewish. And I'm not any of those, so I am pagan. That works, that fits for me. So, and, the, and like I said, the beautiful thing about pagan, <clears throat> the beautiful thing about being pagan is I can follow any path of any religion I want, and it's not, it's not going to diminish my faith or anything like that. If anything, it's going to help me grow as a person spiritually. Now, do I meditate? Yes. Not so much anymore. I don't ever have the time. Um, I try and meditate at least once a week. Am I still heavily into crystals? God, yes. I have a million of them. There's one right here. Part of my... I can't show you because it doesn't go that far. I don't know if you can see that. Part of my my hanging thing from my 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 rear mirror. Do I still do runes? Yes, I'll show you some of it when I do my tattoo video. I I do skin craft. I my spells are on my skin. I I keep track of it in in my my uh, book of shadows. I haven't written it there in a while. It's, it's probably a little lacking in that area, but. I use tarot cards, I, I do Reiki, I do uh, homeopathic remedies, I, I do essential oils, I, you know, I follow the old religions, I follow the old gods, I do not believe in God and Jesus Christ, I don't believe in them, it never worked for me, because how could a God that was all-encompassing and all-good kill so many people, order the deaths of so many people, burn so many innocent people at the, de at the stake. So many things that were done in the name of God in all the past, it just, it, it didn't line up for me. It didn't work for me. And all the things that I went through as a child that it says that it, 
you know, let us not suffer the little children. It doesn't work that way. I suffered as a child, okay? I I went through a lot of shit, you know. I'll, I'll post about that later. It's not really relevant to this. I mean, it, it kind of is, but it isn't. But it's just... For, for my beliefs and my train of thought, it didn't work for me. And so... And, like, everybody's like, Oh, well, so you believe in magic, but you can't prove that. You can't see it. You can't... I have seen my magic work. I have seen proof that the gods are listening, that they hear us. I have seen proof that my energy works. It adjusts things. I have, I, I, I carry stones on me every day. I usually have a pocket full of rocks. I don't right now because the site that I'm at, I have to go through metal detectors. And pulling those out of my pocket all the time is kind of frustrating. So I don't have any on me right now, aside from the one on my necklace, which is a, it's a meteorite which I use as a battery for my energy. I store my energy in it. But I carry, you know, I usually carry rocks on me every day and I have a certain set of them that, you know, they do certain things and they do work. And I feel like shit when I don't have them. I, I literally feel like crap today. Um, but it's it's really cool when it when it comes back and it, and it actually works. Um, now, I know that religion is a touchy subject for most because they, they feel that in order to be accepted in today's society, they have to conform. And you know what? I'm a fucking rebel. I don't care. I don't conform to anybody. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to hate me because I'm not Christian, that's your problem, not mine. You know, I, I, I just, I don't believe in it. You know, I accept other people's beliefs. I try and be respectful of other people's beliefs. And, um, sorry, I have a head gown pulling off. But I, I just, I don't, I don't believe in it. And I, and I don't shove my religion down anybody else's throat. I really, I, I try not to talk about it too much. Um, Mainly because even though it is more of a common religion nowadays, there are more people that are that are getting into it. I still I still feel a lot of stigmatism towards it because the first thing I always get when I say, Oh, I'm pagan is oh my god, you worship the devil. And I go, No, it has absolutely nothing to do with the devil. Matter of fact, I don't even believe in the devil. You know, and on top of that, the other one we always get is, but don't you, don't you guys like sacrifice babies and, and sheep and goats and stuff? And I said, no, I have never in my life sacrificed a single living being ever. I've never thought about even doing it, never even come close to it, you know, and I'm not in, I'm not part of the love and light cult. I may say love and light sometimes when I'm, you know, because I don't say I'm going to pray for you. Or I'm going to say sending love and light your way. But I'm not part of them. I, I don't, I don't follow that shit. It's not, you know, I'm not a fluffy bunny. So <laughs> that's something I can explain later. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I'm actually almost home and I just yelled at my phone for 23 minutes. So um, as always, like, subscribe. Blech. Like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your feelings. It is impossible to offend me. Say whatever you're going to say. I don't care. Um, all of my uh, other social medias in the descriptions. Um, you can follow me on that. Um, and uh, I hope you have a good night.